Hi everyone, welcome back to another edition of the Velvet Lounge Life Outlander Edition. So yes, this playlist is going to be all Outlander all of the time. So on this playlist, what I'll do is first of all, I will always attach a link down below in the description as well as just as a giggle and a haha -ha and a just to have like some reminiscence of Poldark because we have some people joining us from that series. Thank you so much for leaving the comments that you left, for watching those videos, for sharing them, giving us the thumbs up, agreeing or disagreeing. We thank you guys so much that are stopping in and are going to stay with us throughout this new series, Outlander, that are joining us from Poldark. We really, really, really appreciate you. Also, I would like to remind everyone, if you haven't done so already, to please subscribe to our channel and to also click that bell so that you will receive a notification when our newest videos are uploaded. And also give us a thumbs up or give us a thumbs down. But if you give us a thumbs down, just be nice enough to be respectful and let us know why you gave us a thumbs down. Also, if you do give us a thumbs up, of course, we also would appreciate a comment from you. Whether you agree with the story plot, disagree with the story plot, wish something else had happened, are so happy certain things did occur. Um, whatever your comments are, we really love to read what you guys have to say, and we always respond back. So one of the things that I am going to be doing this series is, of course, as I did with Poldark, I will be posting, you know, items from the show, um, but I have to do it in a different way because obviously it's a syndicated television show on stars and we don't want to take away from that nor do we want them to have an issue with us doing this so one of the things that I did promise it and this is for the people coming over from Poldark is that I was going to definitely and without further ado spoil the entire season five of Outlander. So if you do not like spoilers, then this is not going to be for you. These spoilers will not ruin you watching the show over and over again, or in the future reading the books. As a matter of fact, after they complete the show, which I do believe will go on for at least another two seasons because they have all of the books that you see here, The Fiery Cross, all the way down to An Echo in the Bone and everything in between on this side, they have yet to cover on the television show. They've covered everything over here. So there's plenty to come, but at the end of this entire Poldark series, one of the things I am going to do is give away all of my books. Um, why am I going to give them all away? Because I want everyone to enjoy the thrill of this series just like I did, um, as well as, you know, there are people who may not be able to afford the books. Well, no worries. You may receive all of my books for absolutely nothing. And how do you do that? Simply by subscribing to this channel and also leaving a comment on each of our Outlander videos. So subscribe to the channel, leave a comment on each Outlander video that we put out there, give us a thumbs up, and you will be entered to win all of these books. Also, as a channel overall, The Velvet Lounge Life, ta-da, one of the things we're doing is when we reach 2,500, 2,225 subscribers, we are going to give away gold, silver, American silver coins, and other treats and goodies. Um, those of us that, that are here from, you know, us doing our 
uh, resale business and auctions, you know, we deal in antiques, uniques, collectibles, and oddities. So we have awesome things that we would like to just pay it back, you know, pay it forward and thank everyone that supported us by, you know, doing, I'm going to say maybe up to 10 to 15 drawings. And they, like I said, totally free. We will pay the postage. The only thing you need to do to be entered into that is subscribe to our channel and comment on our videos as well as, of course, give us a thumbs up, but make sure you click that notification bell. But by subscribing and commenting, every time you comment, as long as you're subscribed, that will be an entry for you. So without further ado, here we go with Outlander. So one of the things that I told the Poldark folks is that I was going to review this book, the fiery cross why because this next season is based on events obviously from the past books but obviously now they're into the fiery cross so what's happening right now is every year the highlanders get together and they have a huge celebration it is not just a celebration though it's a place where business transactions take place promises are made fights occur um, romance heats up, you know, that Highlander music makes them drop it like it's hot sometimes. And once in a while, there may be a little baby born or in the oven at least. And in the meantime, life still goes on. So what happens? At this Highlander ce annual celebration, it's about like 1770 at this point, And it's important to know the date because we know that the American Revolution happens in 1776. So unfortunately, there's only like a few more years, six years or so before the war occurs. And of course, um, Claire has told Jamie this. And of course, you know, Brie and obviously Roger know history because they're from the future also. So there's always this impending thing on their back that this is coming as well as their supposed impending deaths in a fire on Fraser's Ridge. Will that happen? Will it not happen? Will it really be their bones or someone else's bones found in the fire? Does Jamie ever go to the future or does he stay in the past? These are all questions that will be answered eventually. So I'm, while they're at this Highlander celebration, um, I'm just going to skip right to the points of the main gist of everything. But Brie and Roger go through this whole thing because of religious persecution in the States at that point, or the Americas. And eventually they do find someone that can marry them, but there's a lot of like rigmarole like leading up to that. And... They do get married. Unfortunately, they had to do it in secret. Um, the little children of Fraser's Ridge were also baptized, meaning like those in Jamie's family. And everything, once again, is in secret because there's still issues with the religion, which is ridiculous. Um, Joe Costa accuses poor Roger of basically being a... I'm just going to say it in regular terms of being a bum, of being someone who's just attached to the family to, you know, for his own gain or because he can't make his way in the world without these folks, et cetera, et cetera. I mean, she says some really horrifically awful things to him. And of course, she knows nothing about poor wee Roger. And, and we know everything about Roger up to this point. Unfortunately for Roger... It gets worse, but it's bad enough when you have the grandmother of your wife, like and at that point, you know, of your wife, basically telling you that you are, you know, basically a bum and you're living off of your woman. Basically, that's what she's, and her family. And she tells Roger that, you know, upon her death, of course, he's not going to inherit anything. He's not going to get his grubby little hands on any of her money or whatever. And Roger, like, is listening to this, can't believe what he is hearing after 
all that he has gone through. He is like, what the blank is going on here? He thought he was coming over for a friendly visit and turns out that it was like a mess. So Roger gets to the point where he loses all of his gentlemanness because Roger is like Jamie. They are a supreme gentleman. But when they, someone steps over that line, there is definitely no going back. So he tells her something ugly about herself and the fact that, you know, they don't want anything from her. Even Brianna doesn't want anything from her, et cetera, et cetera. It goes on and on. And unfortunately, he leaves in a huff, in a huzzy, hot under the collar, but he does not realize that Jocasta was basically testing him and he actually said the things that she was hoping he would say so that in her own heart, she was, you know, hopefully sure anyway that he was not there for the family jewels. So now he has basically, he's on her good side after all of that. Um... So the priest that was going to marry Bree and Roger gets arrested. And there is some around that story that occurs. Um, what else happens? Everyone. So after all of this, you know, craziness with the priest, with Jocasta, there's some fights that take place. There's some things that just, you know, go on during the gathering and eventually it's time for all these folks to return to Fraser's Ridge. They pack up to do that. Um, right now I'm going to take a commercial break just to tell you this is going to be a two-part summary of this first part. So I'm going to do this and then there will be a second part after this that will come up in a separate video. So they are all happy to return to just a normal life at the ridge and you know leaving Jocasta and her whole crew behind they actually go back to River Run but of course after they get to the ridge and you know they're settling into catching up on their chores their livestock their farming you know all of that you know house building etc Jamie receives another note from that stupid governor telling him that you know, now we basically need to get that army that I had you assemble marching. It is time to take up arms against the regulators. And, you know, it, you need to leave. Like he, unfortunately for Jamie and Claire, they knew that this note could come at any time. Of course, once they were getting right into the middle of everything seeming beautiful, lots of loving going on etc you know then they get this so what happens is Claire Jamie and the militia and Roger um and some others from the ridge everyone from the ridge that he's gathered into this militia take off and they head towards um wherever it is they're supposed to go um as ordered by this governor um in the meantime they come they meet up again I mean he's sort of like found around the camp like they're camping out with the militia and Josiah Beardsley I don't know if you remember him but he's a little boy that or young man that was abused and basically being hostage like an endangered servant slave um and him and his brother have you know escaped the evil that they were under but he makes a reappearance and Jamie and Claire decide we need to get to the bottom of this, see what's going on with this, this boy. So what they do is they end up going to his home and they discovered that, you know, these poor boys are basically, they're just suffering for just because they're under the foot of two evil, greedy pigs. I mean, there's really no other way to put it. And so what they find is that the house is disgusting. Um, it's overloaded with things that one would use for trade back then. So it's almost like they're a trading post in a way, but they're sort of not a trading post. 
And so, you know, Claire and Jamie are like, why are these boys half naked, no shoes, starving to death when this ample woman and her morbidly, gigantically obese husband are, you know, plump as pigs and they have a house and like, why are these kids being treated this way? And so they eventually find that the woman is actually being abused or has been abused for years by her husband. And what she does is takes vengeance out on him, gets him up into the attic, knowing that he's really huge. And if something happens to him, there's no way he could get down without being chopped into pieces. And she gets him up there, knocks him about. He's injured. He cannot get down. He is bedridden. And he has suffered a stroke. And his wife, her name is Fanny. Um, she is basically just waiting for him to die. Like giving him the minimal, uh, you know, sustenance. So that, you know, it's basically not her fault if he dies. But if he dies, like it's not the worst thing that happened to her ever. Um, and so he's stuck up in the attic. So... Obviously, Jamie and Claire discover this, and Claire, being the medical pro that she is, is like, oh my God. And of course, she has to like try to save him or at least make him comfortable enough. Eventually, they get him out of the attic, down on down into the kitchen, and she can really assess like everything that's wrong with him. They know that it's kind of pretty terminal. It's just a matter of when. And the fellow begs Jamie to take mercy on him and to end his life as a mercy killing. And so eventually Jamie does agree and he does that to the dude. So after that, of course, Fanny is free, but Fanny is free to do what? That's the question. And there's some coming up about that. Very important things that you need to know. So, um... One of the things that happens is Jamie, Claire, Roger, Bree, and little baby Jemmy, um, they go back to River Run. And the reason that they go back is because Jocasta and Duncan Ennis are going to be married. So on television, my assumption is that's Murtaugh and Jocasta. Um, and they go back there. You know, they're having basically fun in a way um, because this is just supposed to be a wedding, go to the ceremony. And if you don't know, back then, the entire process could take like a week or two. And um, what happens, though, is this fellow Wiley starts flirting around Claire again. They have met before in the past. And let's just say for Claire, on her part, there is no love loss. Um, he is just continuously trying to hit on all the beautiful women. And of course, she's one of them. And Jamie catches um, a note of this. And let's just say that it concludes with this fellow probably never wanting to see Claire Frazier again in his life because it is definitely not worth the physical pain. Um, and... I'm just trying to change my picture on the side over here for you. Let's do that. And I keep clicking on things. Let's go back here. There you go. I was trying to put some pictures up here for you so you can see some different things, but... I have this new laptop that I am so not loving at all. To the point that we may even return it because I just don't like it. Ooh, I like this picture. There, how about that? So, what else happens? Um, oh my goodness, this was like crazy and we still don't know the entire bit of this. But there was a slave, enslaved lady who was um, poisoned. Her name is Betty. And she's Phaedra's mom, actually. And she's poisoned because someone has drugged her 
and put shards of glass into a beverage that was given to her. Now, the beverage was actually meant for someone else. My assumption is that beverage was meant for either Duncan because someone is jealous that he is marrying Jocasta because there's a lot of fellows in that area that know what she's worth and also like her as a woman. And they are not pleased that this, what they're considering to be basically a stranger comes in from nowhere, but they don't know that they've known each other for decades and he's going to marry her. So there is some thought that there's this is like one of those revenge plots. And also if they kill Duncan, he's out of the way. And eventually after grieving, maybe Jocasta marries one of them. But no one knows yet if that is the fact. So um, Claire does an autopsy on the lady. And so she's doing this autopsy on Phaedra's mom, Betty, when... Stephen Bonnet and the Wiley dude break into a, basically a sort of like a storage house that they're doing this in, her and Jamie. And of course they see the lady splayed open, their mouths are agape, and they're thinking, oh my God, what on earth am I looking at? Of course they know nothing about a modern day autopsy because back then, a doctor would basically look at you and assume that you died of X or Y, or it was obvious because you were hung or because your leg got cut off and you bled to death. Like there were the obvious things where they could actually give a, a factual conclusion. But obviously if they couldn't see physically what was wrong with you, they did not do autopsies in the 1700s. So when they see this, God only knows what they're thinking. They're probably thinking witchcraft, you people are evil or you're body snatchers or who knows, whatever. But what happens is um, Claire create, well, there's this whole like thing that goes on. Jamie has to fight the guys. But in the meantime, Claire creates a smoke screen for them by burning down the shed with poor Betty's body in it. And I say that because poor Phaedra is already like devastated because her mother was fine and all of a sudden she's dead and no one knew why. And now her body has been burnt to a char to ashes. So it just makes everything even worse on top of what it was already. But the good thing about the burning of the shed is that there's no proof, even if Stephen Bonnet or Wiley and I th or any of these people speak up about it, there's, n there's no proof that she did this autopsy. There's no body. So thankfully, they, she was smart and she did that. Um, so now we're going to go back to something that happened with Fanny, who is the adopted parent of Josiah Beardsley. So... Fanny decides that she does not want to stay at this house and with, you know, the, where her husband, you know, Jamie helped him go into the afterlife. And plus she hated it there. It was just a place of awful memories. But what we find out is that she's never been in love with a guy that she married. She's actually in love with an enslaved fellow who has ran for freedom. So he's free because he's a runaway um, from his enslaved life. And so together they ended up having a baby. So you just think this lady is large, but the lady is actually pregnant. And so she has her child who is obviously half black, half white. And she leaves a child at the militia camp with Jamie and Claire. And the lady takes off. They don't know where she is. They look for her. They have no clue where she is. She's just gone. So now Jamie and Claire are um, caretakers of this newborn baby. And they are not really sure what to do. They have some plans, but they're not sure yet. So in the meantime, after that occurs, at... Um, now we're going to go back to Jamie and Claire being at River Run. They're at River Run. And while they're there, there's an attempted robbery. Someone tries to rob Jocasta and Duncan because 
there's this story, which is actually true in the book, obviously, of this cachet of gold. And so they, you know, are, they are basically the only person that really 100% knows the story of this gold is Jocasta. And she knows of it because of her previous husband. And it's called the Frenchman's Gold. And what people don't know is that this gold is hiding in a mausoleum, which is on her land, with a questionable dead body accompanying the legitimately dead body that is in the mausoleum. We'll get back to that more later. So um, Jocasta is threatened because she's blind. They don't really, they're like, she can't identify us, like she can't see. And I mean, she can hear though. That's the thing is people forget that we have more than like a couple senses. And that actually does come into play later. And they beat the crap out of poor Duncan, like basically trying to kill the guy. And there are at least two people that are involved in this. They don't know 100% yet who it is, but we will find out shortly. So thank you for joining me for this part of the review number one. I have part number two coming up. And part number two, I am going to basically conclude the main big punch in the face portions of the fiery cross. But like I said, we are going to go through each television episode for season five. And I will spoil each of those episodes after each show. So we probably have at least, I'm going to say seven um, episodes that I will have on my channel for you to enjoy. Thank you so much for tuning in. Stay tuned for part two of this particular review. And also remember to subscribe, give us a thumbs up, leave a comment so you can be entered into our drawing to win all of these books. And thank you once again. Enjoy your life. Remember that your health is your wealth and without your health, you have nothing.